Let me tell you, man. Mini Countryman sponsors Adventures on Four. Service operator, which service do you require? Um, please, ambulance, I, I don't know. Okay, try to stay calm for me. What's happened? I found a body. Oh, God, I think she's dead. Thank you, Silver. Thank you. This is how detectives begin a murder investigation. What have we got then? Deceased in the bedroom at the minute. No sign of forced entry. Could you do their job and solve this crime? It's quite a daunting looking island. These ordinary people believe they can. That's a view, isn't it? You cannot underestimate what it's like to be involved in something like a homicide inquiry. It's the highest level of being a detective. You need to be brave. You need to make some tough decisions. It's incredibly difficult. You ready for this? Yeah, let's do it. If any of the teams find the killer, they can claim a £50,000 reward. You know the one in the red is the SIO? Yeah, she's serious. She's the serious one. The investigation is led by former Chief Superintendent Parm Sandu. I want people who are going to be really strategic and forward-thinking. I cannot forgive. If you fail me once, I cannot trust you again. You will address them as sir, and you will address me as ma'am. Working in pairs, the teams will be assessed by two of Britain's top murder detectives, Simon Harding and Graham McMillan. Let's get in our cars and go to the crime scene. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma but this is no ordinary murder. It's a mystery written by one of Britain's most famous crime writers, Ian Rankin. And the person in that body bag is me. to see us, do they? No. They don't, they're not that welcoming. <laughs> We've got a car coming up here. Uh, yeah, let's whack down the regiment. You never know, it might be helpful. My grandfather was a detective. My, my dad was a detective. So genetics would suggest that it was in my blood. Wow, look at the cows. They're huge. We first met at the pub that we worked at together. I think we can judge characters quite quickly and we know how we can be around them, which I think will help yeah, as well. definitely. I'm so nosy, I just want to go and stick my nose in everything. I literally am the nosiest person ever. I live in a tiny little cul-de-sac, there's about 10 houses, and if I hear a car door, me and my mum are both like that. They actually are 24-7. Yeah. I'm shitting myself. I'm not going to lie. I feel like I'm going to get murdered. This is the manse. This is where we believe that the victim lived. There is a forensic examination taking place. They will prepare a report, and then that will be sent through to all of you. What I need you all to do is to focus on preparing a watertight case that we can take to prosecution that is going to be successful at court. Does everybody understand? Yes, ma'am. Parham and her deputies have no idea who killed me. They have the same information as the amateur detectives. At the moment, all we know is that her name is Charlie Hendricks. So we need to understand who she is, why she was here, and how she died here. You might be wondering what happened and why. Well, that's me, six weeks ago. 
on my way back to Hirsha. I always loved it there. Never since I was a kid. You have to tell me. All I can tell you is the place is magical. It's the most magical place in the world. When you're there, can you do magic? Of course. And everybody does. I love you, Daddy. Looking back, perhaps running away like that was always going to end badly. Some clothing in here, Simon. Right, so when you're inside the address, you must keep your gloves on your hoods on, your masks, and that is to prevent the cross-contamination. <sighs> you ready for this? I'm seeing blood all over the place. I'm just conscious of not crossing over things. Yeah. Caroline, would you like to have a look at the, the pictures? Yeah. OK. Uh -huh. Oh, there we are. Well, I hope we wouldn't be underestimated. She's got a wound in her left hip. When you see these detective things on television, when you look at the Miss Marple character, you well, know... Well, she's about uh, 85. Absolutely. <laughs> and people underestimated her all the time. So what, is it, what does this tell you here, then? This is a complete blank canvas. You have fingerprints, DNA, blood patterns. You have to then look at the other items, like photographs, items that might be lying around, financial documents. There's so much that can build up a picture. Who is that person? What do they do in their private life? Does that person live alone? What kind of personality? Are they an angry person that upsets people? Oh, she's got a, a whole load of pamphlets. Yeah. When you understand the victim, you might understand why they died. Hey. Sonia. Whoa. <laughs> Long time. What are you doing here? All change. Job, ideas, the works. Yeah, hardly recognised you. <laughs> you and Tony still? Yeah, we're good. I teach and he runs the hotel. God, it's been so long. Mm. Five? Six years? <laughs> Sonia, I really am starting a new. As far as I'm concerned, what happens in Glasgow stays in Glasgow. That looks like her, doesn't it? Yeah. So my guess is that's Charlie. Similar, similar hair colour. Some more pictures on the fridge. Yeah, I mean, this has definitely got to be her partner. And that looks like they're in the van together. Can I just say, right, I recognise this, this lady here. I've seen her before. When did uh, you see her? Just on the way it, onto the island, I saw her outside the shop. So that is a person of interest right there. I hadn't been on the island more than two weeks when I took that picture. Can I help you with anything? Uh, just getting a few bits. Who knew stepping into a shop would change my life? Just visiting? Yeah. Well, ask if you can't find anything. <laughs> We've got most things. Wow. They really are something, aren't they? You didn't take them, did you? No. No, no I didn't. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> She was expecting a visitor. Yeah. Two well, glasses kind of here. Visitor, oh, there's wine in this one, and we can see her lip imprint on the bottom. And she's got all her herbs ready. Yeah. Most murderers aren't serial killers. They may not have planned out the murder. They will always leave clues. Her mug of tea has been knocked over, so she's been sitting here and somehow been startled completely. Thank you. 
When people murder another person, there is normally a panic. <laughs> the, the fuck are you doing in my house? The majority of cases that I've dealt with have been through jealousy, greed, fear, lust. Oh my God, you have got no control over any of this. It's not necessarily the person who hates you the most who would, who would murder you. Okay, out of my house. It could possibly be the person who loves you the most. Um, there's also a footprint on the uh, wood. Yeah, that's the, the round pivot mark on a trainer, isn't it? For the rookie detectives, the scene where I died may hold the first crucial clues to who murdered me. Oh, my God, I don't know what to do. When you stand at this scene where there has been a bloody murder and there is blood and there is, you know, it's horrible and it's distressing, but you must make sure that nobody walks through that blood scene and we don't lose vital evidence. If you haven't done it properly, when you go to court, it will be dismissed as being inadmissible. Dot? Yeah? Can you grab some pictures here? Is that all rubbish? Oh, sorry. There's blood marks up the wall on these. And then there's black handprints there. And then there looks like there's some sort of stain with the same hand. I think that paint has got something to do with that. I reckon that's, like, the murderers. The paint? Yeah, there's, like, metallic markings of, like, fingerprints and stuff on all the door frames. No, that's where they found the fingerprints. You know, where you dust fingerprints to see what's underneath? <laughs> that's what that is. <laughs> you just do come out with things that just literally... I probably weed myself around her. We do have a, a tendency lot. of just weeing at each other because of just we just it's die. It's funny, we just, isn't it? I think when we get Wait going, till we we're can't. old and we can't control our blood at all. <laughs> it's going to be a nightmare. What's in the boot? Just a chair? Yeah, What's like a, just like a little fold-up chair. It could be livable, couldn't it? There's a plug socket okay. at the back. She seems to be a person that is quite transient, almost like a, a new age kind of hippie kind of person who's quite free spirited. I saw your poster out the front. What's that all about? Oh, it's a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. There's a proposal to develop tourism on the island, to build a kind of eco resort. Oh, Nersha, that's awful. If you want to know all the ins and outs, then the person you should talk to is Hamish. Hamish is on. It's a papers, Jean. Hamish. We were just talking about you. Why? Oh, Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Oh, uh, Charlie. Charlie Hendricks. Charlie was asking about your poster. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've been coming up here since I was a kid. I love the place. I hate the idea of it getting bought up. Well, the fight's not over yet. Listen, I'm going to be kicking around for a few weeks. I don't know if you need a hand with anything. I'll take all the help I can get. I can't stop now, but uh, we could meet up later on. Cool. How about I buy you a pint? All right. That sounds just about fine. Maybe I can buy you one, too. Uh, maybe. <laughs> right. See you, then. Save the planet. Loves plants, loves nature. She's definitely spiritual. What is this? this? Take a picture of that. It's a map. Yeah. You're seeing here different um, bits of land that yeah. belong to different people. I believe it could be a thing where there's a dispute over a particular property, or and these name point to who's involved in the dispute. It's like she was trying to sort out who was selling their land and who wasn't. The map talks about people who are for or against selling land. This is the most obvious motive at the moment, and, and for me, that's the bit I really want to understand. James, we'll get some photographs of this as well. Absolutely. Right. 
back at this uh, brochure here, advertising a new eco-tourism project on the island. Luxury eco-lodges. It says the developer's a woman called Cordelia Jameson. And there's a woman working for her called Alicia De Villa. So I'm not sure what that is about. The victim was found by uh, a lady by the name of Alicia De Villa, who called it in on the Treble Nines. We can get that call, but we don't know where Alicia is at the moment. So that, for me, is red flags are coming up everywhere. Why is she involved in finding Charlie dead? Curtis to stand when their sire walks into a briefing. Each of the teams need to prove themselves to be in with a chance of claiming the reward. Do you want to sit down? Assessed at each stage of the investigation, the weakest teams will be taken off the case. Simon, Graham, is there anything you two want to share with me about what happened this morning? Um, well, boss, Dot and Rox, we, you were taking photographs while standing in the blood at the entrance to the bedroom. You then introduce footprints onto the uh, rug in the bedroom because you've been standing in the blood. You were taking lots and lots of random photographs with no meaning to them. I take less random photographs when I go on holiday. Sarah and Richmond, you also stood in the blood. Caroline and Chrissy picking up the wine glasses, which were next to a yellow tag where it said, do not touch anything like that at all, OK? Nick and Andrew, um, yeah, lots of assumptions, I think, as you drag by the feet, drag through the hallway, don't jump too quickly into what you think, because then it starts to direct you in the wrong way straight away, OK? Right. Had you all done your jobs properly at the crime scene, you would have discovered this diary. And it was found inside the hot water bottle, which was on the bed. This could have contained some clues about her innermost thoughts. What is she doing on the island? Who is she? Also, had you looked at the scene properly, you'd have found this money and this passport. There's £2,000 in there. Where did that £2,000 come from? You all came here believing that you could be detectives. Pick up your game. Start thinking. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally gutted. I was shaking. The fact that he's literally assaulted us by the holiday photos as well, I just think, like... <laughs> <laughs> that, that was really personal. Dig up our, you must have a fucking boring holiday, though, mate. It's vital that we get the detectives out there quickly, start speaking to locals. Have we got the keys? <laughs> Got a game there tries to start off with. If you go in there acting like an obed, then they're not going to appreciate that at all. I mean, when detectives are interviewing uh, witnesses, got to get it right. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Hi there. People will know everybody else's business, so we need to connect with them. Ma'am, there's police here to talk to you about this morning. Hi. How can I help you? It's a very close-knit community. Bye. Bye, Miss. Bye. There's a post office and a shop. Jean, how long have you lived on the island? Eight and a half years now. I was just holidaying, actually. Oh, were you? Yeah. <laughs> Met someone, got married here. It's really important to work out how Charlie fits into that community and what binds them together. Is it the island? Is it protecting the island? Great, if you just want to come upstairs, it's a bit more comfortable. All these people you're going to see are persons of interest in your inquiry, and every one of them could be your murderer. It's just up here. No. Thank you so much for welcoming us. Um, we know that you did make the initial 999 phone call. Where were you? I was outside that the manse where Charlie was staying, I'd, I think I knocked and um, I, sorry, um, no, she take, was. No, take your time, take your time. 
She was, um, like in the bedroom, lying on the ground in her bedroom. And I noticed that there was blood. That's when I, I must have got my phone out and there wasn't any signal, so I made my way down the driveway. And that's when I saw um, Ishbel um, Corrie driving. As I approached the village, Alicia was jumping about, waving her arms and running up the single track towards okay. the road. Charlie, in the house, quickly! And she was frantic and yeah. visibly very distressed. No, of course. Okay. I can't get any signal. Stop here. Here you get a signal. I said to her, "I call the police," and um, and I went down. I headed down to the manse to see what it was that Perfect. was upsetting her. Yeah. Okay. Horrendous. Blood on the floor and the young lady was gone. Logan, make sure you wash that. Yeah. What was it that brought you to the manse this, this morning? There was a meeting last night. I'm here on the island working on the development project. So we had quite a lot of support, but there was a few unhappy people. We were just trying to get over the, the last hur hurdle. Charlie, she was just oh, one of these so, sort of eco-warriors. And there was a few crosswords, you could say. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought it best just to go and clear the air. Okay. And what were those crosswords? I, I, I can't recall exactly. Okay. Is there sort of anything going on in the island? Any disputes or anything like that she, she may have been involved in? There's a project to, you know, do a big tourist thing here, and Charlie thought it was just grim. Yes, we, we did notice her badge and oh, yeah. her yeah. pamphlets. And... Do you think there was any bad feeling against her, or...? There was quite a lot of upset about the whole thing. Okay, the Standing Stone Arms. My name's Andrew and this is my colleague Nick. We're both from um, West Scotland Police. I'm Tony Slade, the owner. Hiya. Hi, madam. Hi there, you're right. So that's Hi. my wife, Sonia. How are you Hi. doing, Nick? Um, my name's Andrew and this is my colleague Nick. We, we just wanted to ask what your relationship was with Charlie. She rents the manse from me. She, she, rent, she rented the manse from me. With you or for, from you, sorry? From me, from my from wife, you. Sonia. <clears throat> We, we just wanted to ask when it was that you last saw Charlie. Um, yeah, um, well, we both saw her after, after well, the meeting. Last night, yeah. We had a meeting here. Right. Uh, last night in the back room. OK. There's been a bit of a kind of ongoing issue on the, on the island um, involving a woman called Cordelia Jameson. OK. Um, and, and you said an ordeal. Can you expand on an that? An ordeal? I don't think I said ordeal. Right. What, what did you, you say? said an issue, so an ongoing issue. issue. There's an ongoing issue with, uh, with Mrs. Jemison. Uh, yeah, she um, is trying to acquire pieces of land from okay. um, people that live here. So okay. um, offers have been made to, uh, to islanders, okay. uh, including myself. Um, and yeah, so last night was a wee bit out of the ordinary in that respect. Right. I just want to take you back to um, the meeting. I know you said it didn't end very well, but could you tell us a little bit about what happened um, um, at the pub? Yeah, I, I suppose she interrupted quite a lot. If a witness is really uncomfortable in talking on a certain subject, you know there's something there. She was just oh, someone who's got a lot to say. Um, yeah, there was... Um... Hello there. Apologies. I'm not interrupting. No, not uh, at all. No, not at all. This is Freddie. Oh, nice to meet you. Hi, Freddie. Nice to meet you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sorry about that. No, sorry, no, just sorry. two seconds. Sure. 
the, the detectives got to have that dexterity, that professionalism to know when to challenge. See, Freddie is somebody that we would obviously love to have a conversation to. with, um, if possible. Well, I'm sure if, if you want to speak of to him, yeah. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, sir. You Would better you... come in. Thank you. Everyone's really shocked by what happened. She was such a such a young woman, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, what's your relationship with Alicia? I'm an investor in a Cordelia's ecotourism business that she's setting up here, and I'd come down to try and encourage Alicia to get the project over the line. Cordelia, lovely to hear from you. Thought it'd be good to catch up. How are you settling into the house? You'd think it was Alicia's the way she swans about the place. But it's big enough for both of us. Hope she's looking after you, Freddy. Really appreciate you heading over there, keeping an eye on things. It's no problem. Opposition to the development doesn't seem to be wavering. Considering the amount of money we're putting into this island, you'd think these spanners would be more grateful. You should see the new paint job they gave Alicia's car the other day. Has she told you about this woman, Charlie Hendricks? Quite the nuisance. I've met loads of midges like Charlie in my time. Annoying as hell, but one swipe and they're gone. I've already told Alicia to give the island a 48-hour deadline. 48 hours? You're a very generous woman, Cordelia. Well, let's see how that goes down in the meeting. All we need is for Tony Slade and Logan Corey to sign, and we're there. Alicia says her charms are definitely working with young Logan. I'm not so sure. She seems on the edge to me. Don't underestimate her. She's tougher than she looks. There's a lot riding on this for Alicia. There's a lot riding on it for all of us, Cordelia. Did you see the victim recently? I saw her last night at the pub. The amateur detectives are interviewing the last people they believe saw me alive. Alicia had a, a presentation to try and get the project over the line. There's a few uh, parcels of land that still need to be bought up. OK, quiet down, let's get a bit of order. Now, the bar's open, but why don't we let Alicia crack on with her presentation, and afterwards, Sonia and I will be on hand to make sure no one goes thirsty. Thanks, Tony. Who was at that meeting? Can you recall who was there? Everyone, really. It was, it was for the island, so most people, I'm sure. Alicia, Hamish. Logan was there, Ishbel was there. There's a river going around, there's a deadline. Where did you hear that? Look. Alicia gave her presentation. You now have a 48-hour window to make your decisions. 48 hours? Yeah. And after that, the deal's off the table. You can't put a time limit on it. You're talking about people's lives. Charlie uh, started heckling from the back. Do you remember some of the things that she said? She was just accusing Alicia of uh, trampling all over the island and not caring about what local people wanted and that kind of... I mean, it was all nonsense, really, to be honest. I mean, the local people, I think, are in favour of the project. Once that land's sold, your voices won't be heard. If anyone disagrees, stand up now and speak. Hamish. You have 48 hours. It's up to you. Jean. Jean. Then a few of them went outside. I didn't hear what they said. Um, Hamish. Hamish. There was some shouting in the courtyard. There's some sort of thing going on with uh, Hamish and the woman who runs the post office. I don't know if they were married. There's something going on there, and Charlie, there's some kind of triangle. Things got a wee bit heated last night, and we had to draw the meeting to a close, so things spilled out onto the courtyard. Afterwards. Was there anyone in particular who was more heated than... than... Hamish. Right. Uh, Jean, uh, in the post office. Um... And Hamish, mm -hmm. um, who's he, sorry? Is he a regular? Hamish Cowdy's a childhood friend of mine. Um, yep, we've I've known him all my life. Where about on the island would we find him? Uh, you'd find him on the South Farm. South Farm. Yep. Okay, thank you. And you mentioned, I uh, hope you don't mind me asking, Miss Jameson made yourself an offer. Mm -hmm. 
Are you looking to accept it, or is we'll we're start. undecided? Yeah, we're undecided. Yeah, we're... but it's something that you maybe would consider. It's not off the table. Well, right now, we're just undecided. He gave me a weird vibe. He did actually. I, I actually think that Tony is he's hiding something. Uh, sorry, I'm just getting a glass of water. Mr. First, I, I just um, realised you've injured your wrist there. Could you tell me how you did that? Yeah. Um, it's quite sore, that. Uh, though, well, actually, last night, um, I cleared up Alicia's wine glass, and I was just at the sink there, and, you know, it just cut me slightly, yeah. Take it easy, OK? Thank you. It's like Charlie, she was trying to sort out who was selling their land and who wasn't. She was trying to come in the way of someone's big project. She was obstructing them, mm -hmm. and they needed to take her out. In the initial parts of a murder investigation, you start to get bombarded with different types of information. So we have a pub full of people in a meeting hours before that person's death. Everybody there has to be a person of interest. How do you then start to piece this together? So, timelines, sequence yeah. of events. Yes. So start putting people into different sequences. You have to be structured. When was the last time she's been seen? Leaving the meeting at around 8.30. Yeah, because okay. she was arguing. So that's your start of a 10. And couldn't we do like a spider? Yeah. That's what yeah. I love to see, that sort of stuff. OK. And then you will start to see what's relevant and what isn't relevant what fits into your timeline or doesn't fit into your timeline. And then that allows you to see the wood from the trees, essentially. According to the other witnesses, there was an argument between Charlie, our victim, a gentleman named Ham Hamish, Hamish, and a lady named Jean. Believe it or not, I went to the University of Surrey. I did criminology. Left college thinking that I was going to be the next Sherlock Holmes. But it, it was very, very hard to get a graduate job. And I had no choice but to work and went into a completely different career. I went into um, HR and recruitment. It's a little bit like um, the career that got away from me. Who have you identified that you're going to see next? Jean. So we think there's a bit of a love triangle going on between Hamish, Jean and Charlie. So I think these two photos help us try and understand, did Jean have more of a romantic relationship with our victim, Charlie? And I think we can put this to Jean and say, we found these Polaroids in the house. Um, what do you have to say for yourself? I think we both enjoy competition. Like, we both want to win something. We're not great losers. We play rounders. We do tennis, surfing, swimming, ping pong, <laughs> football, rugby. You name it, we'll make it competitive. Oh, I don't know what to do. They're going to come and look at our board and think, what on earth is this? What do we put on this whiteboard? Um... Hello, sir. Hello, sir. All right. How are you? How are we getting on? Um, OK? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, we were just mainly making some more notes on... You look nervous, a pair of you. What's the matter? No, I'm not. I'm literally calling as a cucumber, can't you tell? So who's that? That's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> OK. What's that for? Um, um, it's just to give us a kick up the arse, really, because it's a bit of a grumpy old sod and just sort of thinks that we don't really have what it takes to do something like this. He told you that? Yeah. So we keep him there. So yeah. when we look at him, we think, actually, no, we will yeah. do it. And it's just uh, a bit of a... Because like, we can hear him going, you're too thick for this. Do you want to prove your, wrong, your yeah. dad wrong? That we can do it. You think you can do that? I really want to, um, I yeah. want to. I've already said I'll move in with Dot. If we get kicked off, I'm going to go and live. I'm not going back home to see him. Not Could you hide? It. And we will. We will prove him wrong. OK. <laughs> Happy? Yeah. Teamwork. Fabulous. Write it down. OK? okay? Yeah. The only person who doesn't write anything down is Rain Man. It's in there. Understand? OK? Good. Right. Got it, sir. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs>
Pass, if I can just um, speak about when we're interviewing witnesses or suspects. The four teams of rookie detectives have 48 hours to prove they're good enough to stay on the case. Yesterday, what I was observing was far too many closed questions. If you ask a closed question, you're going to get a closed answer. Use words like explain, tell, describe, and then listen. You've got two of these and one of those. So listen to what they're saying. It gives you time to think, because there was lots of hooks being thrown out. All you need to do is be quiet, and it invites them to talk. OK, so you've all got a few ideas, you've, you've got a few leads. One of the things we were taught very early on in our service was accept nothing. Challenge and check everything that you're told. Anything that is, seems out of place probably is. Check it. Thank you very much. Look at that view. I can see that Andrew and Nick have, have, have got off to a flyer. Um, the room was very professional, um, and they've, they've gone off at, at great speed. You go and speak to Jean, and uh, I'll just be in the background. Will do. Thanks, sir. You've got to be careful about jumping to conclusions. The skill of a murder squad detective is we know what we know, but we need to get out the information that the witness knows. Hello. Ah, oh, hello, is it Jean, is it? Hi. Hi, yeah. nice to meet you. My name's uh, Detective Nick. This is Detective Andrew. I'm just doing some stocking up, actually. I'm not officially open. Oh, that's but, um... OK. So we can, we can maybe just have a chat. Is there somewhere we could maybe sit through the back? Um, do you mind if I keep working? Sorry, it's just yeah. I've got loads to catch up from yesterday. No, no, so OK. I'm just, I'll be right back. That's all right. You sure you wouldn't rather just us come through there? Um, I'd rather keep busy today, if that's all right. That's all right, not a problem. Hi, Hamish. Hello. We're Detective Dot and Rocks. Uh, we're Sorry. just here um, to talk to you about the murder that happened yesterday morning. Are we all right to ask you a few questions? Certainly. How long have you been doing this type of work for? Where are you from? Me personally, mm. London. Right. And you? You're from London? Oh, yes. So, I don't expect you'll know much about this place, do you? Oh. I think we know enough so far, and that's definitely one oh. we want to find out more information. I see. Uh, I just want to ask about the night before there was a meeting. Yes. Can you tell me a bit about that? What happened at the meeting? Alicia did her normal spiel. Charlie got upset. What were your emotions when you saw Charlie getting irate? I mean, I wasn't really fully engaged with it. To be honest, I had quite a lot on my mind, but... Charlie had a good point. And what else was going through your mind then at that point? Like I said, it'd been a really busy day. Friday was just, you know, it's, it's hard running this place by myself. There's a lot of orders coming in. I normally get help on a Friday. I didn't get help on a Friday. I was just, you know, there's a lot going on. Who would normally help you on a Friday? Hamish comes in sometimes to help with deliveries and stuff. And Hamish is your husband? It's my ex-husband. Ex-husband. And how recent is that separation, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, it's not official. Not official. Uh, you mentioned Jean is your wife? Yes. So can I ask, what is your marriage like? It's just that I've noticed that Jean lives somewhere and you live in a caravan separate. Well, I'm trying to get this house up and running so we can stay there. So the marriage is still happy and healthy? Yes. Sorry to hear about the breakdown of the relationship between you and your husband. Um, that's obviously not nice. Um, can, can you give us a little bit more information as to why that broke down? It's personal. I, I, think, I think you know Charlie more than you're letting on. Sorry? I think you, know, I think you spend more time with Charlie than, than you're letting on. From, from what we've heard from other islanders and, and what we've seen, we've, you... we're under the impression that you two were, were pretty much inseparable and, and quite good friends. Sorry, who have you been talking to? We've been talking to everyone on the island. But who said that... Who's been talking about me and Charlie? And we've, we've seen photographs of the two of you together. We've seen photos of just you two. People gossip on this island, but, uh, like I said, everybody comes into this shop a couple of times a week. I got on with Charlie. I won't lie about that. She was a nice girl. But you just said to us you didn't spend that much time with her individually. Oh, just a, a normal amount of time, like anyone would on an island. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't really know what you're getting at. No, no, I think don't worry. We're just trying to build up a bigger picture, so don't, don't worry about things too much. Yes, 
I, I saw her regularly, like I do everybody in the shop. She was a nice girl. And you'd never met her before she moved on to Ireland? Just no. To okay, perfect. Thank you. How long did the meeting last? Not long. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, there's a Glaswegian here by the name of uh, Freddy Forrester. OK. This okay. man appears at a meeting. The next morning, Charlie Hendricks is no longer alive. All right, well, thank That's you very great. much for your cooperation. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it. Go we'll and visit Freddie Forrester. What do you think? Funny little thing. Yeah, I quite like him. He, yeah, but he's very into this whole Freddie Forrester thing. Talk to Freddie Forrester. You hear him? That's good, though, because we hadn't really heard of him until now. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. We haven't, um... He hasn't said either that he had the dispute outside in the courtyard, so... Yeah. We asked him about that, didn't we? No. You didn't ask me about the courtyard? No. Oh, I thought you had. Okay. No, neither of us did. I... I'll give you my view on it very quickly. Yeah. yeah. This morning you were told to get a free recall, let, let the witness speak so you can listen. Yeah. No free recall whatsoever. We let her too okay. much. You, it was like a, a, a double act. You'd just given a witness a grilling. Bang, yeah. bang, 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 bang. This is a murder inquiry. How many murders have been on a small island like this? Mm. I know she's busy, but let's just explain the seriousness of it and say, look, if you could stay in here, because she kept walking out yeah, yeah. at certain points, and yeah, you need to know why. OK. And let's get all the evidence uh, from questioning and listening, because that's what the boss wants, OK? Detail. Cheers, sir. See you later. Thanks. It's funny. I've been here so often. It's never really felt like this. Like what? There's some post-mortem reports here, which have come through. What I want you to do is I want you to go through that post-mortem report ASAP. The forensic scientists of the opinion that Charlie was injured in the living room, yes. um, collapsed in the hall, and was dragged or dragged herself into the bedroom where she died. The only significant injuries were a stab wound to the trunk. Yeah. And the an incised wound cut to the left hand. Yeah. If there was a wound to her hand, she think she was fighting back? Yeah. And probably got yeah, it from yeah, that. Yeah, put her hand yeah. Up. yeah. Abdomen, wait a minute, we don't know. Contained a little fluid only. No recognisable food stuff. And yet, half that bread was gone. Liver was healthy, spleen healthy. The kidneys were normal. The uterus was slightly bulky. What does uterus slightly bulky mean? She was pregnant. She was pregnant, yeah. That's what a fetus is. Mm. She was pregnant. She was pregnant. Jesus. The size of the fetus suggests this was of six to eight, eight weeks. weeks. Now, let's think about that, because we know that she had been on this um, island for about six weeks. Yeah. Do you reckon she knew she was pregnant? Why is she drinking alcohol if she's pregnant? Good point. Did she know? And if she did know she was pregnant, did, do pregnant ladies smoke drugs? Was she pregnant before she came? Yeah. What was her reason for coming here? Oh, man. Oh, God. She's, She's obviously had a sexual relationship with someone, whether it was like an actual, you know, partner that she's been with publicly yeah. or not. And there's got to be someone that knows about it. 
we also assumed that she was... In some kind of love triangle, didn't we? Well, but we also thought that she was potentially a lesbian with uh, Jean the post yeah. lady, so that's completely confused us. Who, who, whose baby is this? Did they want rid of the baby? Did it's someone you. else find it's out you. about it? And why, another question, who was she hiding was she from? from? Who was she running from? Oh, mate, this just feels like just hard because no one's going to come out and say that they're a murderer. I feel like everyone's bloody hiding something. Well, yeah, they're all linked in together, do you know what I mean? Who's the father? Did she know she was pregnant? There's so many questions here that are unanswered. Could be anybody. Charlie! She didn't happen to tell you that she was pregnant. I knew. I've told you everything that happened that night. <sighs> Boom, he hates her. He wants her off the island. What's your proof? What's your evidence? No, 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 no proof yet. <sighs> Pack up your office. I am taking you off this investigation. I got a dodgy little shit. One of those people down there is the killer.